All right, recording this one. Okay, to remind you here, here's the videos. You're welcome to visit that. You will see a list of the videos. And as I put them up, I'll update this. Can you tell what kind of document this is? What kind of document is it, Monique? It's a Google Doc, because you see docs.google.com. I published a Google Doc a Google Doc as a web page. So it makes it easier for me to keep track of things. And all I have to do over here is put a link to that published web page. Now we are going to be uh, getting some data from our book companion site. So we're going to be using this link. So you might want to log get logged into eLearn. We'll be needing this in a little bit. But first, we'll go back to our Word document here. This is how far we got in last section. We didn't have as much time, and I was messing around with the shape of my text box just to show you what you can do with text boxes. You can adjust their shapes, unlike paragraph backgrounds. But uh, let me go back to our version. Let's see here. Where did we go? Let's see. We can go open, and it remembers recent files. And I guess I messed with this one last time. Well, I'll go mess with this one this time. Here's where we left off. We got our text in there. We got our alternated, al alternative way of putting in text, the text box. You, can, it's, you don't have to have that, but I'm just going to show you that because I think it's pretty cool. And then we have our paragraph. Turning off paragraph formatting because they can get annoying sometimes. And then we have the text there. And the next thing the book wants us to do is adjust this text highlighting a few things, playing with some colors, and I'll bring up my book into that. Oh, I have to get signed back in. Now along the way, I'll be adding a few extra pieces of knowledge so you are word geniuses. And let's see, we got started. Adjusting the highlighting of some of that text. The bulleting, we just ended turning on bulleting. And we're going to highlight a few words because we want to draw attention to specific parts of our text and just get some practice modifying our font style. So we're going down to that uh, word expert in there, this word expert right here. And we want to make, make the style of the word expert to be attention grabbing. Well, remember to select a word, I can double click on the word and it selects the word. But sometimes I don't even have to have fonts selected. I can just click as long as my cursor, my insertion point is there. Whatever I do to fonts will apply to that word. You would think you'd have to have it selected, but no. If I apply a italics or control I, that whole word becomes italicized. If I only want a few of the letters in the word, that's when I have to select them and then control I only italicizes those two letters. But if I, just like in a paragraph, if I apply paragraph formatting, I, all I have to be is somewhere in the paragraph. With a word, if I only have the word selected or my insertion point in it, italicizing that word and now changing the color of that word as well, I don't have to have the text selected. doesn't hurt to have it selected. But now I'm going to change the color of that word up here in the color menu. I'm going to choose the six column over second orange from the bottom, giving it a dramatic orange color. I could do this as well from the right click menu in here as well. This is the same menu if I just right click on something that quick menu pops up. Okay so we've highlighted expert and let's see what else they want us to do. We italicized and colored it. We could make it bold if you like and you know what you you can get even more creative if you like. We're going down to that last line. I'm going to select that entire line by clicking in the left margin. And I'm going to make that 
font size 28 and Calibri. Not sure how it got Times Roman. I might have accidentally chosen that. I want to make that size 28. I could right click, or sorry, Control Shift greater than, or come up here and select, or I could right click, choose my font size here. And I'm also going to choose my font type of Calibri. So that line has the right size for us. But there's some decorating we want to do down there as well. We want to make that entire line of text to be our lovely orange color. And I can come up here and click. I don't even have to click the font su uh, st color selection. It remembers the last color I had selected. A little convenience for you. If you know you want it the same color as you last selected, you don't have to go choose. But you can always choose either the right click or up in the home font menu. It remembers my last color. So now we have that orange, but we're not quite yet done. We want to make the phone number to even be more noticeable. So we select the phone number, and we're going to underline it. And I forgot to add the exclamation point to it. So I'm selecting through just the phone number. Control U will underline it. Let's see, does the right click give me underline? Yes, I can right click, quick menu, underline. Control U as well, and I'm going to add the exclamation point. Make sure I'm in the right spot. Exclamation point. If you don't want the exclamation point highlighted or underlined, I can select just that letter and Control U to toggle off underline. So Control U toggles it on and off, and there we have decorated text, colored orange, multiple places. And one more thing, we want to highlight that we are an award-winning surf school. So over here under award-winning, we highlight this. Let's see if a trip, let's see if a double-click selects. Oh, double-click stops at the hyphen. To select them both, I have to drag through that. Or I could start clicking here and shift-click here at the end. It will select everything between where I made the previous click. And control B or the right-click B, capital B. Turning uh, and anytime I click Control B again while it's highlighted, I can turn both off and on. Control B, good key stroke to, to know. Okay, so going little by little, becoming an expert at all the font selection. And this is not in the book, but I wanted to remind you that whenever I'm in font, adjustment I want to highlight fonts a great thing to know is what's under this dialog here there's a lot of other options under that dialog advanced options I can scale I can adjust my spacing between uh, the letters I can adjust even more details about the font that's, remember, in the font dialog box. And I get there with Control D. And down in text effects, I can even have more options of transparency of my text. There, I can choose the color there as well. Text outline, shadow, glow, lots of things in the advanced effects. So if you've seen Word before, pretty comfortable with it, get a little bit more knowledge of those additional options under text effects. Lots of other options there. As you do more uh, glitzy type of things to your documents. I know a lot of your documents you're doing, you know, papers, and of course the content is the most important, but adding and knowing how to do just a little highlighting will make your paper or your resume stand out a little better from all the rest. And we want you to show your office skills. About every job out there says computer skills. And that's why we require this class. If we want to hand out degrees, anyone that sees someone coming with a degree, they expect you've got basic, you know, the general ed computer skills covered. Okay, now before we go and add a picture here, going to be put an exciting picture, let's learn a little bit about, about themes. We're going to a different different tab here, the third one over, the design tab, actually the fourth one over, the design tab, 
There are document design characteristics we can apply to our entire document. And in here, I could choose a theme, which is actually a font and color styles and paragraph styles, all chosen at once. I could choose a type of text theme here. Or what the book wants us to do is just play with the specific color set. So a lot of things going on here. We're only going to mess with our color set, although we could actually apply a whole set of colors and fonts and styles. We're just going to change the color and keep the style that we had. If I chose one of these others, it would actually change my font as well. So we're going to jump down here and choose the blue theme. This will actually change all the colors that I have chosen in my uh, document. And we've only messed with that orange color. But see where the orange was now gets replaced by this bluish color because a blue design or color set has changed. Now let me show you the where this actually what is actually going on here. If I go back to my home tab and say I want to look at the color of expert now, if I go to my color table, see how that color is still the six column over a second from the bottom? That's what happens when you choose your color theme. The colors you have chosen are still in that same spot in the color table, but we've changed the colors and their arrangement in our color table. If I had actually chosen a standard color, I don't think changing my theme would change it because I'm not selecting one out of the color table theme. That's why they call it theme colors. So choosing a color out of theme colors means you can, by selecting a theme, change it throughout your document. But if you choose it, if you're coloring something and you know I always want this to be red no matter what theme color I choose, then you could choose to color something with a standard color. So we have done all our coloring using theme colors, giving us that option. If I decide I want to go back to a different color scheme and just see how it looks, I can just zip through my various color sets and choose a certain arrangement of colors. So this one, we just stick with the blue theme because it goes with something surfy and water theme to go with our surfing idea. Now I think we're ready to go on to graphics time. They go through a few pages of knowing how to select graphics, how to select text. I'll let you read through that table and it may be part of the chapter quiz just letting you review that. Before we insert our picture, we're going to center that paragraph. And then so then when we insert a picture in that paragraph, it'll be nicely centered. So I'm going to go to the paragraph that's underneath that surfs up sign. And I can always turn on and off my paragraph marks to see that it is. I'm going to move this text box up a little bit so you can see that. To center that, I have my insertion point there. I can remember the control E or just click the center. And remember, you can always right click. And there's a centering somewhere, I thought. Oh, I guess there's not there in the right click. I guess you have to go to the top menu for the centering. Now that that's centered, I'm going to insert a picture. And you should, if you don't have your pictures around, you should see a folder somewhere on your computer having the data files. If you don't have the data files, let's go ahead and give it a try. See if you can find your data files. I'm going to do insert picture. And by default, it looks for a file. I have my pictures way down here in the data files folder in my CS101 folder. If you can't find a picture somewhere in a download of data files, let me show you where you would get those. This is where you could go to the student online companion, taking you here. And here are the data files that go with the book provided by the book vendor and they have them in separate little files for each module. So we would get the Word 2016 model modules. You would click on that. Pay attention to where you're saving it. If, you, if it automatically starts downloading, it's probably in your downloads folder. If I save this, then it will appear over here in my downloads. Let me go up to where that appears. Okay, the download part. Okay, so I would go to first the student online companion link. 
That will take me to here. And I can click on the data files link and that will show me well actually then I then this shows me this here on the page. And the second from the top link, this download now 13058 file listed with module 2016. I'm gonna click on that and it should see it should pop up this or it will automatically show I'm downloading it if you're using the default downloads folder. And let's see, on what browser am I? I'm in Firefox, so I can always click on this little arrow here and show, and I can uh, see what things have downloaded. So I can go to the folder where it got downloaded to. Let me go through that download process with this one. So I've got, gone to here. I'm going to click the download. I'm going to do a save because I've set my browser to always ask me where to save it. And I'm going to put it in my CS101 folder. Let's just go ahead and give it a, I'll call it a dash 2 just for the second time down. Once it's downloaded, on Firefox, I'll see this little arrow and I can show the folder that it contains. I can do open containing folder. Now, remember, I'm going to turn on the larger icons here. Remember when you have a zipped file, it looks like a folder, but if you look carefully, it has a little zipper on it. To actually see what's in there and be have and have Word be able to use the files from there, I need to right click and yes, answer OK if it warns you. You can right click extract all. That will take all those files in that zip file folder and make them available like regular files in your system. And I'm going to zip them to a folder called, I'm going to add data files to the name just because 130587 isn't a very good name to know what's in there. I'll call it data files for, for CS101. Now if you, you may see a file there already in your computer because the previous section we went through this. It unzips them and it shows you where they are by looking at the little, at little address bar. This is where we want to browse to when we want to bring the folder into Word. So now I can come over to Word. Oh, not that Word. We're done with that one. I don't know why I have a spinny thingy right now. Let me go over to the other Word that I have on. Yeah, it's waiting for me to select the file. And this is where then I can browse to where those files were. There's my data files. I browse down into that folder. Go down to another folder with the 978 in front of it. And module 01 should appear. Double clicking there. And now I see my surfing picture. So they give us a data file. I extract it. It creates multiple folders just like you did before creating a multiple folder zip file. They're sending you these files there. Browse down into that. Finally get down into the module one as you go deeper down into that set of files. Choose the surfing picture and then up should pop this surfing picture in your document. Now at this point, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I get a little better feel of how it's going to lay out on my page. And I see because the picture is so big, it's going to uh, push my end line off to the second page. And notice when I have the picture selected, a format tab shows up. If the picture is not selected, the format tab is doesn't appear. So As long as you, as long as you're comfortable finding finding images and bringing them into Word, yeah, yeah, you can get a different picture. But remember, there's multiple ways to get pictures. If you go to Google Images, that's one of my favorite places. Uh, sometimes you can copy paste. That's probably the easiest. Sometimes you have to download it first to bring it in. So, if you want to try a different picture, you are welcome to, because that's showing me your your gaining experience at doing more than just what's in the book. But remember what you can do with a picture. 
While I have it selected, I click the Format tab, and they've specified a specific size that they want this picture. They want this, in this particular one, they want us to set the size of the picture to be 3 was a 3 point something. Where was the sizing? You have, this, you have the picture selected? And then does the format tab show up? Let me take a look. What we're going to do here is in the height, we're going to set our height to be 3.7 inches. It automatically scales the other dimension to 5.06. Let's see what's going on here. We have the picture selected. there. Now it's time to explore a little bit more of all the things you can do with pictures besides changing the height. Remember you always have the sizing handles but if you don't drag a corner watch what happens. I can actually warp the picture if I don't drag a corner. When you do grab a corner and size it, it keeps the proportion for you automatically. Just like when I type over here it keeps the proportion when I change the height and width. This is handy when I know exactly the height. Most of the time you're adjusting it by eye until you see what you think looks good for your picture. Now what I love to do here, to me that picture, although it does show the ocean, I want to see a little more interest of that surfer. So cropping pictures is a very handy thing to know. Click on crop when it's selected and you can adjust what's actually going to be showing from the picture even though it's a bigger picture, I can crop it when it's being viewed in Word and only see parts of that. So cropping, very handy, skill to have. And then when I click off it after I'm done cropping, I can set the size of that, after I have to go back and select it again, I can set the size of that crop picture to be the 3.7 that they asked for. 
3.7. And it keeps the proportion then of the crop picture. But yet, but we're not done yet. We have even more cool things you can do with pictures. You can apply shapes to it and special effects up here. And I'm going to let you choose any of these picture styles. Have a little, uh, get a little uh, experience here with the various picture styles. In the book, they apply the fuzzy oval. That's the one they have in the book. But there is many other built-in picture styles you're welcome to experiment with. I used this one last class because I kind of like 3D. But the reflection thing is kind of cool looking. No matter what you do here, it does affect how it lays out on the page and whether or not it pushes off to the second page, that last line. So if you do apply effect that, that forces you to have two pages, go ahead and just reduce your picture a little bit until it bops back down to only needing one page. So choose whatever style you like there. It's kind of cool what you can do with the formatting. Remember, it has to be selected. Then you can choose the format. You can do lots of other things, like the actual shape of the picture, what the border is going to look like. Uh, picture effects is what we adjust to add a glow. And in the book, they ask you to add a, forget if it's a green glow or a yellow glow. You get to pick. Or a blue glow. That would make more sense for a watery theme. I wouldn't think the green glow, to me, doesn't fit as well as the bluish. But you get to choose what you want to match. And notice how the glue glow made my picture enlarge a bit. And I do have, seem to have an extra line hanging out. I'm going to really get that, rid of that extra line. We don't want more than one picture or one page in our little poster. Other things you can do are all underneath the format, picture effects. And if I want to adjust some 3D rotation to my picture, actually hand a, put in a custom rotation, I can add my own effects. or if I want to get very fancy, go way down to the bottom, and it takes me to this formatting menu. Lots of things. Remember how the font advanced settings? This is the new advanced settings dialog where you can modify in detail every setting of everything that's been done for you when I choose a style. I can modify any of my characteristics of my picture. Here's where I can adjust my glow color rather than only have what they offer. I could choose my glow color. I could adjust the width of my glow, the transparency of the glow. This here is very powerful but can get very confusing. If you know, let's just choose something that already has all the effects that I'm happy with. That's the canned, I call these the canned built-in effects. One thing to remember, though, whenever you choose an effect over here, it wipes out any any customization you may have done to a previous style. So if you're gonna, if you like one of these but want to adjust it a bit, choose this first and finalize your choice before adding your own effects. Because if you decide, oh, I wanted, I liked all this, but let me have that same thing with one of these other styles. Sorry, you lose all your custom and have to redo it again if you change this. And remember, the undo is keeping track of everything you've done, so you can always control Z back to where you were before you decided to experiment some. So often what I'll do is I'll choose a specific type and say, I want, I want to have it the uh, rounded rectangle shape, but I want to add some more things to it, like maybe some 3D rotation. Well, I can go over here to do 3D rotation, and Let's see, it does have some presets here. I can adjust, but notice I'm not seeing it until I just I choose it here. Whereas up here, as I hover over it, I get a preview. So although I have more options here, it's not as user friendly. I was hoping that when I hovered, I'd see the effect over there, but I don't see the effect until I choose it, then it pops up. Adobe Photoshop has a lot of this, and it's a little friendlier than Microsoft Word, but each version of Word is getting more and more powerful, very much like the Adobe products, but not quite as ergonomic. But as you learn to use it, you don't have to go say, well, I wanted to have glow around pictures. No, you don't have to get Photoshop to do that. You just have to hunt through the Word menus. 
So be creative. You can choose whatever styles you like. Remember, the, the standard colors will stick even if you adjust your theme. Anything chosen in the theme colors will change if you choose a different theme. So I can apply all this. This here gives you built-in shadows and things if you like a little drop shadow, different direction, so many things you could do. That's kind of cool looking, like it's my picture after I get back from vacation. And as I zoom out, I can adjust my picture size to fill the picture as much as possible before forcing a new page. And it will stay centered because the paragraph I put it in was centered initially. Now I can do the same thing to the surfs up shape just as, uh, but I couldn't do it to that paragraph. That's another reason I like text boxes. Text boxes allow me to format them and look at the text effects I have or the shape effects I have. I can apply those things to my text box. Not available in just a plain paragraph fill. Another reason that that's a good skill to know. If I just want to put some text but have the ability to put some fancy effects to it, again a text box, and I can even do a 3D rotate. Now the in the book, let's see, I think at this point after Knowing how to do your picture adjustment, getting familiar with all the possibilities there. You can even correct your picture if you find out on your printout or on the screen. Typically, this is for print. If you find out when a print is coming out too dark, I can apply corrections to my picture. Say it's too light, I can darken that picture. I can apply artistic effects to my picture. A lot of cool things you can do. Again, these things were not available in previous versions. Kind of a fun thing. You're welcome to play with any of those effects. Get familiar with all the stuff available in your design of that particular photo. So lots of picture effects. They apply the, go, the glow. So you're welcome to choose an, an existing picture. Let me just go over that a little bit. A great place to get pictures if you haven't done this before. If I'm looking for a specific topic like boldly approach, grace, it will give me web links to that topic, but I can also choose images for that topic. And I have posters that people have made and posted. Or I can say, you know, I don't want to look for photographs. I want to look for a specific a drawing to go with that idea. And I can find, well, I guess there's not so many drawings. Even, even with a topic like this, you got to be careful. You don't know what you're going to get, especially with your, if you have an audience. Be careful, no matter what images, you never know what you might pop up, even with a very innocent sounding search term. So I'm not even going to scroll down too far because I know that you never know what's going to show up and I wouldn't want to cause you pain and suffering. But if you want to add drawing or painting, it'll add that and Often very inspirational, give you great creative ideas of how to uh, illustrate a particular phrase in a, in a uh, slideshow or in a document. So those images, oh, and when, once you do have an image, you select on it and it gives you the full size of it. Then right click, save image as, or save link as depending on what browser you're in. I can do the save here, but I trust the right-click save. Sometimes these saves take you to another link down and there's very confusing saves. Right-click save is the easiest thing to do. I will not get the same image when I do right-click save here as if I just did a right-click save image from the thumbnail. This will give me the 
smaller thumbnail image. This is the full size. And if I want to actually you know, view the, the page that had that on the, on the image, Google Images, you can always take you there. OK, so lots of possibilities. Uh, and a, sometimes, sometimes you can do a copy image and a paste. Let me try that and see what happens. I copy and a Control-V paste. And it gives me, yes, it gives me the capabilities of as though it were inserted from a file. So on the image, a copy paste. And let's see if the drag and drop will work this time. Sometimes that works like you'd expect. Other times we don't see it. Let's see if a drag and drop. Oh, look what I get when I drag and drop. I get a long, ugly link. So the drag and drop didn't work, but the copy paste did work of the image from the search. Okay, the only thing left to do here is to uh, add the page border. I'm going to enhance this page with a cool border. I'm going to close the text effects dialog. Zoom in, control, roll, close that. Adding a page border is as easy as the design tab. You'd think it would be in layout, but no, it's in design way over on the right page borders. And while you're over here, notice you could also be putting in watermarks or page colors. I'm not going to do anything unless I have a color printer. See my artistic effect I applied to my picture? It's kind of fuzzied it up a bit. But page border gives you a capability of applying a border to everything in your document. In this case, in this case we only have one page. But if we had multiple, multiple page document and we like the cool borders, I think they can get rather annoying. But for a poster, it's probably appropriate. I'm going to choose, you know what, let's get very creative. Let's try a art border. I could choose a very boring dotted line like they do in the book and adjust the width of it. So know how to do that, but it might be more exciting. Let's choose something more watery. There's a zigzaggity. That kind of reminds me of water. And let's see, can I have, look at that. The zigzag only allows a certain width. I can even choose the color of my border. You want to add some color. And I could even get fancier and choose one of the artsy borders. See, something in here makes me think of lakes. You're welcome to choose any of those borders, but you cannot leave it the boring plane. You can do the dot, the dash line is in the book, but experiment, find out what all is available here. See how, although, although it shows black and white here, once I choose it, it takes on the color that I had chosen here. So it could be musical C. Let's see what that looks like. There's my musical note border. To adjust it, I go back to page borders. And let's see here. I can actually make it wider musical notes. There we go. With posters, you can be very crazy with a document unless it's uh, something that they want craziness typically documents you don't put borders on pages unless you're doing a test that's asking you to show your skill at that so remember where that is design page borders at this point we pretty much met the requirements for this assignment just checking here where they've Adjusted the color of that page border. They actually make it make it lime colored. Oh, they also did a centering of the contents vertically. And where is that? That's on the layouts. They did a a line. Would they have something selected first? Page setup. There we go. Page setup dialog launcher. And where do we lay out layouts? Vertical alignment center. That was a little that was a little more detail. Let me do that again here. If I want to actually make sure my my content is centered in the page. It's underneath layout, the detailed page setup layout, layout tab in there, 
and then the page vertical alignment center. Now, let's see what happens. Oh, I see a tiny change in the content. Page setup details, layout, vertical alignment, centered. You don't see the change until you click OK. With the Adobe products, I'm so used to seeing the change because I kind of want to see what difference it makes. So vertical alignment, center in the page setup, one fine tuning of your content on that page. You can also adjust margins depending on how you how thick you like your margins. Since we have that page border, we probably want to leave our margins about the one inch. Notice I can adjust my layout, landscape, and it tries to fit it landscape. That, of course, is not going to work for us. Control Z goes back to the previous layout. So layout, very powerful in the final, how it's going to fit on the paper. See, a lot of, a lot of little dialogues hidden within all those details. And something as you do it with other documents, as you make documents, you'll get familiar. There's so many things up there that there's three books covering uh, introductory, medium, and advanced capabilities of the Word, the, a whole office suite. We're doing the basic things, but you're welcome to explore, but you're re you are responsible for the things that the book has covered. But I would recommend, if you want to uh, show your skills in an interview, know these other things. And also, be able to help other people that are wanting to make a nice looking uh, advertisement. So many things available there. All right, so at that point, I think that's all that this task, this little project is. You're ready to save it and upload it in the backstage view. They show you how you can see your properties, but it looks like They adjust any text. They do a little editing. Say they had a document they wanted to modify. We'll stop there because we want to, don't want to get too far ahead of the other section. See, I applied that 3D effect. Not as good quality as I might want, but I'm not going to mess with it too much. Nope, this one you don't have to zip up. At the end of this project, they actually modify a little text a little bit. Uh, surf today or improve your form and skills. But I think you find that it's pretty easy to just go in and add text or, or delete text. The main thing here is we don't want to put so much text in here that we force it to a second page. If we do, our image size is what we would adjust to make sure it fits on one page. So save it there, and you're ready to upload. You can save it. I would save it to your own CS101 folder with your name in it. Uh, save it to your jump drive or your OneDrive, and then doesn't count for me until you've actually uploaded it to here. Module 1 assignment down in the Word section, Word Module 1. That's where you'll finally be uploading your final version. And after that, well, actually, it's not due for a few days, so uh, you can take it easy for the rest of the day and have a wonderful day. Yeah. Is that all you needed to do? I can submit it right now. Yeah, you can submit it right now. Yeah. Yep.
you see your OneDrive in the file explorer? So you'll have to go to the online, get the online one drive. Yeah, I log in there. I don't know why. I I I haven't tried it yet. You may, you might try dragging and dropping it from OneDrive. I don't know if that works. But downloading, those, knowing downloading it works as well. Six. <laughs> 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 